stop. Wait a minute. You're about to see an image. You'll have 10 seconds to determine what it is. Ready? Go. Your brain is about to go on a journey. You're going to discover its deepest secrets and unveil its darkest abilities. Let's go back to this image. So, what did you what did you think it was? Well, a similar test like this was run recently where participants ranging from the age of 4 to 60 were, were shown the same picture and given one minute to determine what they see. Some of the answers included from the younger kids a, um, a Popcorn picker uppers picking up red pieces of popcorn. So now that might seem seem crazy, but really it's actually pretty impressive. Guess what? Your brain has 100 billion neurons, and every single one of those neurons work together to solve that image, and it's pretty impressive. Neuroplasticity. What does this word mean? Neuroplasticity is your brain's property to adapt to its surroundings, to change to what it gets inputted, and give a reasonable output to the world. And neuroplasticity helps you survive in the world. Don't get what I mean? Let's play another game. What do you see here? Now, most of you guys are going to say, I see letters A, B, and C, and you'd be perfectly correct. And look at the nec next image. What you see here, the numbers 12, 13, and 14. Nothing, no nothing wrong about them, nothing strange, right? But if you look closely, you see this. So what your brain did here was it took that thing and used the surrounding information to determine what it was. So some of you guys see a letter B. Some other people might see letter number 13. And to say that, both of you guys are correct. But your brain took the surrounding information and actually gave an identity to this random thing. And it was all in your brain. So, so far. Neuroplasticity is your brain's ability to change. It can adapt to its surroundings. But why neuroplasticity and how is it used in the real world? Well, some of you guys might have heard of phantom limbs. So phantom limbs are when a person gets amputated, they, m actually, um, have, they actually feel pain in the arm, which was never there, or leg. And this is strangely common, occurring uh, from 60 to 80 percent of individuals who were amputated. And these are all examples of neuroplasticity. Sensory prosthesis. Prosthesis is, um, I prosthesis is taking an artificial body part and implanting it into your body. And senses are, well, senses. So sensory prosthesis is using artificial senses to help people find their way around the world. And for example, a baby dropped on any place on the face of the earth, nine months or younger, will learn the language of that place almost certainly. And this is another example of neuroplasticity. So let's look at my idea. Sensory, sensory addition and sensory substitution are two ways that neuroplasticity works in our real life. So sensory addition. Sensory addition usually has new senses and uncommon senses. And they're mostly automatic. For example, London taxi drivers are proven to have a larger hippocampus, the part of your brain which deals with navigation skills. This makes sense because London taxi drivers have to work their, their way around the city of London to help them figure out where to go. Sensory substitution. It's a really similar idea, but it's a, l a replacement of senses. And it's been around forever. It can be both manual and automatic. Individuals who are born blind have heightened other senses. For example, if you're blind, your other senses, such as hearing, will be a lot better. And this is because the part of your brain that deals with um, your visual cortex, the part of your brain that deals with sight, is actually invaded by your other senses, providing more space for those senses to work around. And this is another example of neuroplasticity. Now, the VEST, and it's a versatile extrasensory transducer. And it's basically a vest th for that deaf individuals wear so that an array of motors arranged on their back can help them feel speech. And as crazy as this might sound, it works. And this is another example of neuroplasticity. So, steps to success. So, a plan for neuroplasticity to become commercial would have to be affordable and simple. What you see here is an example of an external neuroplasticity device called a neuroband. Now this neuroband is actually really cool because it takes external inputs and puts them into your brain. And now your brain, because of neuroplasticity, deals with them and gives a reasonable output. Pretty amazing, huh? 
So let's take a look at some senses. You can use infrared senses, ultraviolet senses, um, echolocation, or ultrasonic senses. And let's take an example, echolocation. So what the neural band would do is it would emit sound waves, and when the sound waves bounce back, they would, be, uh, they would trigger senses on the neural band, which actually intercept uh, um, nerve endings in your brain, and they would help you see the world even for blind people, and it's pretty amazing. And you can do many more senses. Neuroplasticity is your brain's ability to change, and it can be a uh, you can see them in phantom limbs and sensory prosthesis. And sensory addition and sens sensory substitution are ways to explore our world with new senses. So now, I want you all to say the word silk five times, maybe in your brain, or whisper it. Now spell the word silk out five times. Now say the word silk slowly two times. Now quick, answer me, what does a cow drink? <laughs> if you said milk, I'm sorry, a cow drinks water like every other living animal. Thank you. <laughs>